Hey guys, welcome to the 180 Drum Challenge. In today's lesson, we've got a two-fold lesson. We're gonna learn two different warm-ups that Ben's done. We've kind of condensed them in the sense that we wanted to teach two. Yeah. We wanted to throw two in that are pretty quick and they're really fun to practice. Nothing too intricate or difficult going on here. Not at all, not at all. Just yeah. learning, mm -hmm. just learning, man. So tell us. Well, um, this is another kind of warm-up. Uh, the, the second one we're learning is actually one I learned when I was in marching band. Very and cool. the first one is one I kind of came up with my students who were having uh, problems understanding uh, the difference between a triplet played with one hand and 16th notes and it's just it was meant to be a build-up to help them kind of develop their hands Very cool. So um, the first example is just quarter notes and we're just alternating hands Simple enough, right? Simple. <laughs> example two, we're just taking that same pulse da, da, and we're doing diddles now Right, right, left, left. So they're, now we're playing eighth notes. Still really simple, really yeah. simple. Now we're keeping the same pulse and we're playing triplets. Each hand, right, 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 left, left, left. Then, example four, we're playing 16th notes. So four with each hand. My first immediate thought is, how many times have you had a student start on those quarter notes? way too fast and right away you're smiling because you're like, you, I'll let them play through. Right. And they're gonna maybe get through the triplets and then as soon as they hit those 16 Oh notes, man, oh yeah, because they think they're all hot they're stuff because cool, they can right? do diddles and then all of a sudden those threes come in oh. and they're like, ugh. So it's important to uh, note that you can only do this as fast as you can do 16 notes. That's three. right, absolutely. So this is one of those, it's, it's a slow but steady increase. It's, yeah. it's control over anything. So all those together into one pattern sounds like this. Again, see, you started off slow. I was like, wow, that's really slow. And then by the time you get to the 16th, it's 16th, like, it's not so like, much. It's not that, yeah, it's I not probably that slow. might have done the very thing that I was just saying you were going to do. Right, death. right, right. So that's one you don't want to get too cocky on. Yes. But it's absolutely. great. It's a great warm up because also you're feeling that quarter note pulse. Ba, ba, da, 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 So it's also helping them develop that quarter note pulse, that internal clock that they need. Would you usually, everything. if you were playing that just on a pad, would you stomp a foot along to keep? Yeah, the absolutely. Level? So I, I, I might, you know, so I'm, I'll do it two times through. One with the kick, one with the left hand, uh, right. left foot. Now this is great. I mean, you built this for a few reasons. Mm -hmm. It's gonna help build hand speed and control. It's gonna also help us understand and hear the difference between subdivisions, which is Absolutely. massive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and of course, this isn't even all of them, but these are really, really important ones to know. Quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, sixteenths, those are in everything we do. Absolutely, now just not to add to your own lesson, because I think this is awesome, but just off the top of my head, I love, I always, anytime I've got something like this that's simple, mm -hmm. I think, how else could I do this? How else could I make it difficult? Aside from the fact that you could lead it with your left hand, which wouldn't be that much different other than messing with your brain, mm -hmm. you could always go back backwards after. So once you've done those sixteenths, go back to those eight Yeah, triplets. yeah, I never even thought about doing Let's try. Let's try that, try let's try that. Man, high five, or, ah, or whatever, ah. whatever. 
That was awesome. I'm gonna start using that. That's great. I, and see, that's something I never even would have thought of. Yeah. You know, so, but that that's it's really cool. Awesome. Plus, man. it really makes him sweat because you got double the bars of sixteenth. Yes, <laughs> I know. You made me sweat because I was like, oh no, is <laughs> it? <laughs> is he trying to figure out how to get the indenture blitz? I was like, yeah, he's got it. He's got <laughs> it. Ah, he's got it. <laughs> cool. So that's our first warm up that we got in this lesson. Right. Now we've also kind of combined it with this other one that is a little bit more simple in the sense that we're just going between eighths and sixteenths. Right. But we've got double strokes happening, so this is tough in its in its own right. And this is the warm up that you played leading into this lesson. Right. Yeah. Now this one I learned when I marched uh, for two years in my high school drum line, so Very I was cool. band geek for sure. Love um, it. And this was one of the warm ups we do. Uh, we would do so we would line up and we would uh, play this one. And the the marching snare captain actually would and she so she would start it off, and then we would kind of call and response. She. Man, she, I love girl drummers. I love when a girl can play. My mom was a girl drummer. There you go. You Get know? out. I didn't yeah. know that. Actually, my mom was a girl drummer, and my dad was a drummer, too. What's your mom's name? Give her a shout out right Mary now. Mary Satterley was my biggest influence. <laughs> she taught me Hogan's Heroes theme when I was four years old. Amazing. So there you go. <laughs> awesome. And shout out to all of our girl subscribers. Oh, man, yeah. Girls, you, you, you girls rock. Keep it going. Keep it moving. And stay encouraged. That's it. That's it. <laughs> all right, so... Talk to me, man. All right, so on this one, we're doing one and two and three E and uh, four E and uh. That's the first two measures is just that. The third measure is eighth notes, singles, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. The fourth measure is 16th notes, diddles. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. So I'll break it down measure at a time. Perfect. and then you repeat that same measure again. The third measure is just those eighth note singles. And the fourth measure is those 16th note diddles. Awesome. Super simple. Such a fun way to not just practice double strokes by themselves. I always love to find a creative way to practice doubles because they're super boring sometimes to just sit and play double strokes. Right. But it's so fun when you can find a cool way where there's this changing pattern and you got to kind of keep your brain focused. Right. And another thing that I do sometimes when I'm really wanting to make my students work is I'll make them hold that last measure. Yes. There so you go. So it'll be like this. And the look on their face after like the second measure when they start to realize, oh, I don't have this. That's right. I don't have this. My my, their their, their veins start bulging out and their forearms get real tense. Dude, you're <laughs> such a great teacher, man. You're <laughs> such a blast to have. All right, let's head to the practice video. Let's work on these. All right. Uh, I think that's everything. I mean, we've talked a lot about the grip. Um, oh, breathing. Yes. Oh my there gosh, go. breathing is so stinking important when you're doing these warm ups when you're playing. Um, one of the things I, I, I call it snake bite. When you're playing and all of a sudden you kind of go, eh, we've all had that. Yes. Where, you, where you're going to the big fill and you just kind of, it's not like your brain stops moving, it's your arms aren't responding. Um, and w when we're playing, oxygen is constantly needed through our muscles. And so when you do that big fill and you're so excited and you're holding your breath, how often have you caught yourself yes. going, <clears throat> when you just kind of expel all that air that you were holding for the last you know, four bars? Well, it's cool because you can listen to guys like John Bonham and you can hear him in the room. Ugh, like making these big sounds as he's playing. Right. He's drumming so physical. Right, we right. Gotta breathe, man. But man, like uh, to me, some of the most, um, I, I don't know, like I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Some of the ones that can do the coolest stuff, like the fastest stuff, seem so stinking relaxed while they play it. Yes. Like Vinny or, or Simon Phillips or Billy Cobham, he just got the biggest freaking grin it's on his Kung face. Fu, man. Right. He's yeah. And what they're doing is they've figured out the way to do anything they want to do as relaxed as possible. And there's no way to do that without including breathing. Yes. Breathing is so huge. So another thing you can work on is actually practicing breathing in with the measures. Cool. That's you know? awesome, yeah. man. 
So making sure that you're breathing while you do these exercises is absolutely paramount. Awesome. Why don't you demonstrate that on the way out? Okay. Just to make you look super cool. <laughs> Practice video time, baby.